Okay, this is the transformer that I can't turn the core in, and I got it out here in the sun where I can see it with a magnifying glass, and uh, using the magnifying glass in front of the camera seems to work pretty well, and you can see that it's cracked. The core is cracked, so now the... I don't know if I did this, or if it was like this, if someone else did this, but this could be the reason why it won't turn. As you try and turn it, it just spreads apart and binds up. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get that thing out of there. And hopefully I can find another core that will fit in there that's the same length. This is a little bit better of an angle. Using the magnifying glass, I don't know if the camera will focus on that to where you can see that it's cracked or not. The core is out, and here's what's left of it. Not much. I had to break it up with a small screwdriver. It was cracked all the way through. So now to clean this thing out and try and find a core that will fit that's similar in length. So here's a replacement core I pulled out of a, another old chassis I was saving. I pulled this core here out of one of the other transformers so I could get match up an approximate size. So this is our new core and then I need to put this one back in, put it back in the cabinet and, and tune these coils and see how our bandpass looks. I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, just sticking the chassis back in without tuning any of those slugs what it looked like. And for the first time you're seeing the seeing a little bit of a sound bump here which I've never seen before on this set. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the variable frequency oscillator on the two frequencies that those slugs are supposed to be tuned to, the one I replaced and the one that I pulled out to match up a replacement for and then come back to this and see what this looks like. I got a little chart I made here of the IF layout with the uh, frequencies these are supposed to be tuned at. And this is the one, the 42.5 megahertz is the one I borrowed the slug out of to match up for the one I replaced, which was the 44 megahertz. So I got my scanner here, and this is what I'm using as a frequency counter on 42.5 megahertz. So this is my uh, VFO, so I'm going to turn this on. And it looks like I'm still right on frequency here by listening to the... Okay, and now I have the VTVM. I can turn this up a little bit. I have the VTVM connected. Same place as the scope detector output. You use a VTVM when you're uh, tuning with just a carrier like this. So I'll get in, get in here and then I'll peek this. And again, it was expected to be way off because I had just unscrewed it. Let me make sure I'm... Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the 44 megahertz one. So I'm going to punch in 44.00 Okay, and I'm going to come over here and tune this in. Always try and keep the signal levels as small as possible. That's what this is. This is the signal output. Now I'm going to tune the one that I replaced, which is kind of hard to see it, this one right here. Let's see how far off. Wow, that 
stupid thing already got stuck in there. Okay, I had to get a more aggressive tool. That. Wow, this one's pretty broad. It doesn't really have a sharp. doesn't really have a sharp uh, peak like the rest of them do. So it's to go down there. So I guess I'm going to go back to the scope. Okay, so back to the scope. I'm going to really looks pretty whacked right now. I'm gonna turn this thing and see what... Oh, look at there. Still off quite a ways though from the marker on the right side. Should be uh, should be much farther over here. I have to try and screw with some of these other. adjustments and see which ones uh, will broaden this out. Give me the f waveform I want. Taking another look at the SAMs, they want these 45.75 and 42.17 markers about halfway between the top and bottom. And so what I did is I went through and I aligned, touched it up so that that's pretty much what I got here. So I'm pretty happy with this and I'm pretty happy with the performance of the TV too. The fine tuning works perfect. Color and sound follow each other and picture follow each other. So this is a turned out pretty good. I still don't still have a gap over here that's not ideal and I don't have the sound bump I don't know what that's about but as far as the two markers are about at 50 percent so this looks good enough I'm gonna leave it like this because it's working really well to finish this up I was trying to adjust the 4.5 megahertz trap to get rid of this what they call a beat pattern it's this kind of cloth like pattern that you get when you turn the fine tuning right up on edge and it was having no impact at all or I should say it is having no impact at all so I'm gonna pull the chassis out and see if I can figure out why that coil is bad or whatever or there's a bad resistor okay it turns out that the I don't know if you can see this moving here it turns out the solder two of the solder joints are cracked on the bottom of the 4.5 megahertz trap coil and this is a little bit hard to get to to get to the bottom of the IF strip you have to unsolder this metal plate and to do so you have to use this heavy duty 150 watt iron to get the metal hot enough to melt the solder. Using the 415 as a 4.5 megahertz generator you turn on the 41.25 and 45.75 and put it on modulated marker which puts out a 4.5 megahertz uh, signal modulated and then I have the demodulator probe on the 
band pass amp, chroma band pass amp, and I guess what I want to do here is tune this from minimum, and, and I'm not, there's no real instructions on that. That's obviously the wrong way. It kind of seems like it minimums out right there. What's interesting about that is the the core is actually sticking up out of the of the trap coil, which it wasn't like this before. I guess I'll just have to look at the picture and see what uh, what kind of picture we get. So here's our final curve, and and this came out okay. What the What's important is that the 44 megahertz marker here is pretty much centered in the hump and that these two on the left and the right are about in the middle. They're supposed to be 50% so in the middle. So this actually looks okay. The set works really well. It has a good picture. I still don't have the sound hump. I don't know what that's about. The sound is still kind of weak but it's okay. It's fully usable and works a little bit better than it did before I started.